Now, imagine you're driving along, listening to music with friends, and the next minute you're involved in a horrific accident that almost kills three people, and it's your fault. That's what happened to Caitlin Peacock when she was just 19. The crash almost killed her sister, and she was jailed for three months. Caitlin is now a first-year student studying to become a paramedic, and she joins us now from Cairns. It's nice to see you, Caitlin. Thanks for joining us. Take us back to that, that awful day in 2018. Do you, do you remember much about the crash? Yeah, hey guys. Um, look, when I crashed, I had this massive like head impact. Um, so I don't remember much of like the actual impact, but you know, I was out with friends. I was having a great time. My sister was with me. Um, we went up to the top of Copperload Lookout, Lake Morris Road, which is a really popular spot in Cairns. Um, we were up there listening to music, you know, just having a good time. Um, and on the way back down, I did something really silly. I decided I was going to drive recklessly. I was cutting corners. I was speeding, um, pretty much doing everything that you shouldn't do. Uh, I remember coming up and over this hill and uh, the car gained a fair bit of speed. I realised I was going too fast for this corner. So I put my brakes on and the front wheels locked up and um, the car actually went straight off the left-hand side of the road. So wow. I um, heard the seatbelt in the back. I heard it unbuckle and it sort of awoke me. Uh, so I undid my seatbelt, uh, grabbed my phone and crawled straight up the bank. Uh, I laid on the road and I called triple zero straight away, uh, told them what had happened, told them where we were. Um, they kept asking what suburb we were in and I couldn't quite get it out, I couldn't quite remember. So I passed the phone to one of my friends um, and then I pretty much just laid there until the police and the paramedics arrived on scene. You thought your sister had been killed in this accident? Yeah, I did. So when we left the lookout where we were sitting, uh, she was actually sitting back to front without a seatbelt on. So when I crashed the car, I had assumed that because she wasn't responding to me when I was up on the road and I was calling out to her, um, I assumed that either A, she'd gone through the windscreen or B, she'd broken her back or her neck and she was gone. And because I didn't get any response, I just, that was... That was all that was going through my head, you know. What am, are my passengers okay? Like, is my sister alive? But she wasn't responding. Wow. That's, oh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, a, a very, obviously a very scary, scary time. And, and to be jailed at any age would be frightening. But as a 19-year-old, um, you, you must you must have been so frightened at the time. Yeah, yeah, I really was. I um, I never really quite knew the full extent um, of the fact that I would go to jail. Um, I have had many friends that, you know, have obviously uh, crashed their cars and, you know, had a slap on the wrist, but I wanted to do the right thing. So when I crashed my car, I told all my passengers, don't lie for me, you know, tell the truth, whatever happens, happens, and it's obviously what I deserve. Um, so everyone went in for their statements a couple of months after the crash and then they called me in for mine. Um, I told them what I'd done and when I got up, they said, we'll be charging you with dangerous operation of a motor vehicle causing grievous bodily harm. And uh, my mum was there when I did my statement and she said, should we seek legal advice? Um, and the investigating officer said, well, it's a jailable offence, so obviously we can't tell you what to do, um, but we're just letting you know it's a jailable offence. I had um, multiple uh, meetings with my lawyers um, and they were great. Uh, it wasn't until probably a few months before that they said that it, like, you know, it's really serious. And then just a few weeks before the sentencing date, they said there's a highly likely possibility that you're going to serve some time. It won't be long, but you need to be prepared. So pack a bag, pack a book, pack some money so that, you know, you can call people as soon as you get there. Um, pack some spare clothes because you might be in the watch house for a few days. Um, and so that was when it fully kicked in. I just, you know, it all just hit me in that instance then. Caitlin, this is just such a, a, a horrible kind of convergence of, of so many things that went wrong. You crashed the car, you seriously injured your sister and your friends, you're staring at jail time, you're, you're jailed after this reckless driving. This could have been the end of a really sad story, but in a way it became 
a turning point for you, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. Um, it was definitely probably the most one of the most significant uh, parts of my life, and it really it really did change me for the better. Even though it was a bad thing, it changed me one hundred percent. How did it change you, Caitlin? Um, so before I crashed my car, I was I was just a I don't know how to explain it, but I was you know, a typical teenage girl, didn't want to listen, thought everyone owed me the world, you know, always had a chip on my shoulder. Um, and then once I crashed my car, it went down a little bit. And then mm. as soon as I went to jail, everything changed. I thought, no, this isn't the life I want. Um, I really want to change this. I really want to be a better person. I, I really want to motivate people who have done the wrong thing that they can do better. Yeah, and, and you're, you're a great inspiration for how people can turn their life around now. Obviously, it can't change what has happened, you know? It's, um, it's affected a lot of people's lives, not just your own, but... Have you, have you learned how to forgive yourself for what happened? And have you been forgiven by, by your other passengers? Look, I, I've definitely been forgiven by my sister and uh, my good mate, Strop. Mm. Um, the other passenger... I'm not so much sure if he forgives me and I don't expect him to because, you know, it was my fault and there's things that, you know, he can't do now for the rest of his life. Um, I, I really haven't forgiven myself um, because I did the wrong thing, but I have learnt ways how to better myself and take ownership and take responsibility and not do those things again. Yeah, you're, you're incredible, to... Caitlin. You're, you're, you're starting to become a paramedic. You give talks to other young drivers about the importance of being safe and sensible on the road. You have completely turned your life around. You're such an inspiration. You can actually hear more of Caitlin's story and other inspirational stories at the CQ University podcast, How to Change a Life. Caitlin, so good to speak to you this morning. All the best for the rest of your life. Yeah, thanks so much, Sarah and Tristan. Thank you. Good luck with your studies. What an amazing young woman, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Uh, we'll be